Hey guys, and welcome to some studio time digging into Revelations and all the imagery that is there. I don't know if you were able to do any sketching or taking notes as you've reread Revelations or if you've also gotten the book Reverse Thunder and been able to read any of that. I did release a, a podcast about my thoughts and some of my notes from the first couple chapters of that book. So catch that. If you're interested, Bible Project also tons of resources. They've given you some links. I will do it again. Bible Project's great. It, it digs into Hebrew and Greek, cultural stuff, historical stuff, deeper thoughts, and visuals. They do some great videos. They do a great summary of Revelations. I have not finished reading all of Revelations for myself. I've gotten a little distracted in going slow and seeing the movie play out in my mind with all of the visual descriptions that are in these chapters. So I decided not to rush it. I'm just going to go at the pace that feels right, and I hope that gives you permission to do so as well. I got through chapters 11, but what I want to focus in on today is the breaking of the seals in chapters uh, 6 through 10. Last studio time, we were talking about the lamps and the stars, and the letters. So if any of you did any art around those things, I'd love to hear about that. If you have any questions or thoughts, also love to hear about that. And what you're currently reading. Super interested. Let us know what's inspiring you, what is encouraging you to dig into the Bible, what new insights are coming up for you, what are you experiencing internally just for yourself as you sit and soak in God's word and take another look at revelations. And when we're creating the the art, never feel like you have to be literal to creating the art that the Bible is talking about. So like for example, in the seals, they're talking about these four horsemen. I'm just going to start with that one. Never feel like you have to draw a horse. You can draw your emotional response to what you're reading. You can draw something about some of the lines or the verses that really stuck out to you in a powerful, fresh way. Um, But today, like I said, I'm going to challenge myself a little bit and I'm trying to use my iPad. So we're going to do a little screen recording for you and hopefully that will come out well. In Pinterest, I did make a revelations board of some images I've been gathering and you can totally get sucked in and and do this all day. Some of it you'll see in these images or may not be specific to what Revelations is saying, but more of like a feel or a look that I'm enjoying and kind of wanting to somehow incorporate into the piece I make. Today I got a little distracted looking at the way different artists have depicted the four horsemen. So I find that inspiring and then always the danger when you click on one image you have all these new images to look at so sometimes using technology uh, is is not necessarily so helpful because it derails your focus but in trying to figure out how to sketch some of the stuff out i wanted some more reference images to make the sketching go a little bit quicker but you can always print things out and then collage them. I don't know, do you guys have a preference of digital or tangible art? They can both be fun, right? They both have their their pros and their cons. So the first thing I need to do is gather a couple of images and save them to the photos on my iPad. Let's see if I can find... I thought I had an image of a scroll. Oh, the sword in here with the writing, I I captured that when I was looking at one of the other visions of the sword coming out of God's mouth and its words. So playing with that idea. Haven't actually sketched that up, but I was thinking, what would it be like if a sword was made out of words? Like it was all all words in the sword instead of looking so metallic. 
uh, thrones in the throne room, crowns, the different, oh, the different jewels and colors. That's, that's why I had some of those things in there. Keys, stars. This one kind of inspires me with the idea of, like, the different visions floating in. And I'm rambling a little bit. Oh, I'd love to see what kind of lamp stands you guys created for yourself if you did that part last week. All right, here's the scrolls. So one thing I probably should mention again, copyright. You don't need to worry if you're just doing your own personal journey. You know, journaling, you don't need to worry about copyright at all. Really, anytime you're making fresh art, you don't need to worry about the copyright of your image because you're going to alter it. And if you're doing it just for personal, you just plain old don't have to worry about it at all. You can cut it up and glue it straight into your sketchbook. All right, there is a way to put these right in your photos, and I'm botching it right now. It was working earlier, of course, when I wasn't recording. It was totally working. Oh, one of those little clicks that I just did got that in there. I did go on the internet. I found it much easier on the internet, actually, to save pictures. Where's my internet? Oh my gosh. Okay. Too many different things today. So... Let's just say you like this picture on the internet. Actually, this one, I like that viewpoint. Okay, you should be able to hold it and then add to photos. All right, but back to Pinterest. So there's the scrolls. Or the scroll with seven seals. I think you get what I'm doing. I'm just going to give you a brief overview and then I'm going to focus in on creating and making all of my own mistakes on my own time and give you some space to create without watching my video. All right, so I'll send you the Pinterest link if that is helpful for you or create your own Pinterest board. Gather images, do your own sketching. And then if you're using Procreate, I'm going to create a canvas. For some reason, I was thinking a long canvas might be helpful for today. I don't know. There's horizontal, square. You want to make sure. Yeah, we're going to go with long. All these decisions. Okay. If you're in Procreate, you can change the canvas size by going into Crop and Save. And one thing you do want to make sure, in case you ever want to, ever wanted to print it, you want to make sure that the DPI over here on the right side is at 300. But you can play with aspects, ratios, and all sorts of... There's a bazillion things you can do in Procreate. I don't know it all. I'm just learning it. But you want to go over to add, and I think this is what I'm really liking about Procreate is the way you can have the reference photos. So insert a photo, and let's see, the first seal is the white horse. So let's get a seal in here, and let's add in... I don't know if it's my favorite horse, but it's the white horse we've got right now. And let's add in, let's see, then the second seal is going to be a fiery horse. We will just add these other horses for the heck of it. The third seal is the black horse of famine. The fourth seal is the ash and death horse. The fifth seal talks about the altar and the sixth seal is terror and then there's a big pause 
and it talks about the trumpets and the angels, and I didn't grab all those photos. So what you can do, each one of these pictures I just put in here is going to have its own separate layer. So you can turn them off at different times and focus in on one. And then you want to make sure that whichever one you're on, you have it selected, and then you can go up to this arrow, and it will select that image, and then you can pinch it and zoom it in. Ooh, I kind of, just in plain like that, I sort of like this idea. Okay. And then when nothing's selected, you can move your whole canvas around so you can see it better. I don't know why, but I'm kind of liking this idea. So let's turn that one back on. And you can go to eraser. And this changes, this lower one here changes the opacity, so the transparency of it. And the upper slider here changes the size. And since I don't need most of this image, I'm just going to go ahead and erase it. I'm going to select it. Just for kicks here. Actually, maybe I don't like that one, so I'm going to go up to this other image. I can select it. Oops. Okay. So you saw that I accidentally touched the screen when I had the eraser on. You can take two fingers and tap it to undo. I want to select that picture. I want to flip it horizontally because I like this idea of the horses riding right out of the seal. Do you see how fun this can be? There is a different way to do this, but for right now, there are four horses. I want them to come at four different places. So what I'm going to do is take this whole layer, now that it's flipped, and I'm going to duplicate it. You just slide this layer over until you get the lock, duplicate, delete option. I don't like this white horse that I figured out in the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer for simplification. A really nice thing is if you get a layer done, done, and you love it, hit lock so that you can't mess it up on accident. There's also all these other things here. You can name your layers. All sorts of things which I don't really know how to use so but they're there so if you know how to use those use them there's some great tools all right so what I want to do the reason I made four different copies of the same image right now was because what I want to do is go to the erase oops I'm not on the right layer oh I see it's in these other layers are covering up the layer I was just working on so also something to be aware of. So in this green, you can zoom right in and get really detailed. Again, I have a really big eraser and I'm trying to go fast. This is kind of cheesy. I know it's kind of cheesy. All right. Turn this layer on. Go back to erase. I don't need all of these guys. Is the red one next? The red one. All right, so I think you get the idea. 
you can change things up. If you want something else to be on top, you can click and hold, and you can slide the layer up, and then it will go on top. I'm just going to show you this other thing that I'm really loving, is once you get things organized on the page how you want it, add a layer. If you want each item to stay separate, you're going to add a lot of layers. What I have been enjoying lately is creating a layer just for the sketching. So you can go into your brush here. And I'm going to go with 6B pencil. You can change the color over here. Let's go with that. We can move all around. And you just start sketching. You can alter it a little bit. You can just have it be like a rough sketch. And guys, this is not cheating. This is just helping some things go a little faster so that you can soak in what you're trying to. No, and in this case, we're trying to better understand God's word, not focus on getting the proportions and the angles of a horse accurately. So this is a really nice step for eliminating that stress for eliminating that like stress and pressure and you can just enjoy and you can simplify these sketches and you can go detail obviously you can see that it's kind of a blurry picture not super high quality picture so when you take something super not super high quality and you try to blow it up and get really detailed It's going to pixelate a little bit on you. This helps me. Can help. Hopefully it can help you. Sort of like collage. Can help you get an image quicker and get what you're wanting out onto the paper. Which is kind of fun when, right? If you can more quickly get what you're trying to. Huh, onto the paper or whatever you're creating on. It's going to be more fun to keep going because you see this image in your mind taking shape faster and you don't have to go through all of the patience building, right? Of trying to get it right. So now that I'm seeing this guy decorated with the sash and everything, I'm like, did that rider have a sash? So the first seal, the conqueror, breaking the seal of the scroll initiates the judgments. The first creature called out with a voice of thunder, behold, a white horse whose rider carried a bow and a crown was given to him and he rode forth conquering and to conquer. So all sorts of victory symbols there. It didn't say anything about his sandal or his robe. 
He did have a crown. So all of this is artistic license. And you, you don't have to do any of it. Do it to your style. And again, when you are doing journaling, sketching, Bible journaling, it's not about, especially when it's just for you, It is not about making a pictograph, an accurate historical representation. This is for your purposes alone. It turns into something you want to sell or show others. Then you might want to have A little bit of a fine-tuning moment and see if that's accurate historically or biblically to focus in on just sketching one all right so i'm going to show you see then you can where it says n right here it's not on that one on the white one you can change the opacity if you're having a hard time seeing where your line should go you can always bring it back like for shading that can be really nice I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And so there's the start of, and I may not keep this, I just wanted to show you a little bit what I was talking about. Because then you can go in and you can add other layers. You can add textures and colors and all sorts of stuff. You can just fill it in if you want and go over here. And... Pick a color you like. And start filling it in sort of like a coloring book. And again, if you have the opacity up, it's going to do stuff like that. If you have it down, it's going to be more like watercolors. In tiny areas, you want to make sure your brush is tiny. Obviously, a white horse is going to have some shading, right? And then you can, this finger here is a blur. So you can start blurring what you just put on. Just like you would with charcoal or pastels. You can start to get that. 3D look. Softer look, so it's not just colored in. So it's opaque. As you add layers, it's going to, should just go over and over, get a little darker. And go in with the blur. And smooth it, blend it out. You can use your finger too. Sometimes that works better than the pencil. And if you get it outside the line here, again, back to your eraser. Alright, so there's the start of seal number one. Love to hear what stood out to you and what images are coming to mind for you as you're going through this. So I'm going to release you to some studio time. I'm going to work on my studio time and drawing out some of these seals and paying attention to what emotions are coming up. Some of the imagery truly is 
bizarre. Uh, but there's something powerful to them as well. As I was writing the notes, it felt like a movie. I'm like, man, somebody's got to make a movie about this. Super powerful. And if I think of it as showing something in reverse thunder, it says, remember, this stuff is about revealing more of God, a new experience of the scriptures and of God. So instead of seeing these disturbing images just as disturbing images, I think some of those ideas were coming back to mind as well. And it didn't feel scary like it has in the past. I don't know if you've had that experience with Revelation, but it was more like anticipation, like what's going to happen next? And it's quite majestic. It's quite majestic scenes. So I don't know quite how I'm going to relate that to paper, to whatever I'm creating here on Procreate and my iPad. I am really looking forward to what captures your attention, what questions you have, what insights you have to share as you've spent time in Revelations. Oh, one other thing I do want to mention, I really, really encourage you to look into um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I just watched a documentary on him because I've been seeing all these ads for Angel Studios November release of their movie of Bonhoeffer. And oh my goodness, inspired. And I'm going to leave you now to go to studio time with this one question from Bonhoeffer of, we've been asking the wrong question. We shouldn't be asking what is the good or the right thing to do, but what is the thing God is asking us to do? And I thought there was some nice parallels with some of Bonhoeffer's thoughts and the times that he lived in and the book of Revelations as we get in here because it's supposed to help us experience God in a fresh way to encourage us as we live through hard times in history. So looking forward to what you create and when I get my images all figured out here, I will share them with you as well. Take care.